Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to answer a question from the comment section. So, let's do this. Your hustle got to be strong in this industry, as in any other industry. Alright, before we get into this, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you have any input on what I'm talking about, as far as my answer to this question, feel free to put it in the comment section. I appreciate all the feedback, guys. Alright, the question. Do you have a fridge, and if so, do you leave it plugged in all the time? Uh, and then the second question is also, if you were back under a carrier with dreams of scaling and about to get your first van, would it be smarter to go into it yourself or put a new driver in there while you stay still, assuming you're happy, and collect two incomes with only one vehicle expense? All right, first question. So the refrigerator, I do have a refrigerator in one or two of the vans, and it stays plugged in and running all the time. I've got, uh, I think I've got three deep cycle 100 amp hour batteries, uh, AGM batteries in my 17. Uh, the 19, I have two 100 amp hour AGM batteries. That did have a fridge when I was in it. Uh, the uh, 2020 doesn't have a fridge in it. Uh, but yes, I leave it plugged in all the time. With uh, with that amount of power, you're never going to kill it unless you're sitting for multiple days and you're running a bunch of different things off of your inverter or off of that power, the auxiliary power. Uh, you're not going to have a problem with it ever killing your batteries. But that also, having that auxiliary power keeps it separate from your start battery or your run battery. Uh, so that never gets messed with. Uh, you have the system shut down whenever you're sitting. And then that's going to draw everything from your auxiliary power. And a quick side note. If you go to get batteries, something I've learned, you're going to be better off to get yourself some lithium batteries. They weigh less and the... If you get a 100 amp hour lithium battery, that's going to be the equivalent of two 100 amp hours a piece AGM batteries. Now I'm not going to get too in depth about that, but basically, like I said, it's the equivalent. And they're much lighter. Uh, the two AGM batteries is going to, going to weigh somewhere between 130, 150 pounds total, whereas the lithium battery is going to be more around 50 pounds total. So. Uh, may not seem like much but every every place that you can cut a little bit of weight is going to help because that is going to come off of your uh, total payload that you can carry uh, all that stuff accumulates pretty quick so just just be mindful of that just a quick little tidbit on that as far as if I was uh, going to buy my first van would I put it on with a carrier or would I drive it myself well if the job I'm currently working if I'm happy at that job and I'm making a solid income then yes, I would go ahead and put that van on at a carrier and put a driver in the van. Now, you mentioned with plans of scaling. It depends on what you're meaning by scaling. Like, like if your idea is just to grow a fleet, then yeah, there's no reason for you to get into the vehicle. But if you intend to uh, go out and get your own operating authority and become a motor carrier, and you're going to eventually bid your own freight and all of those things, and you don't have the experience of expediting or being over the road in general then I would highly suggest getting in that van at some point and gaining that experience so you have an understanding of what you're truly getting into uh, because I don't in my opinion I think that it's difficult for somebody to bid loads for these vehicles when you haven't been out there and understand what it entails what's involved with the loads uh, so on and so forth, you know, and, and as far as booking the load itself, what loads are good, you know, as far as the dimensions of them, the weight of them, the areas they're going to, so on and so forth. Uh, so I would highly suggest that if you put a driver in it and you do get a van, uh, get the Google Maps or any kind of mapping app or something that, that will allow you to pin and pin all of your pickup locations uh, so that you have an idea of where the freight is picking up from it'll it'll give you a little bit of uh, of uh, Advantage to know those things, you know historically over a period of time That's the short and the sweet of it. Uh, if there's something about your question that I didn't answer 
uh, feel free to comment in the comment section and I'll reply to it in, in more depth if that's what's... Alright guys, so I'm going to answer another question from the comments. So this question is, for the past three years I have been doing local delivery and want to add my first cargo van to the mix. Would it be better to start with a carrier or find my own work? And he puts in there, I do like my already very malleable schedule. Uh, so first thing, I'm not sure if you are doing local delivery in a personal vehicle and you are wanting to grab a cargo van to increase the, the type of, you know, options you have to basically increase your options or if you're wanting to get a van specifically to put it over the road for expediting. So I'm going to try to answer on both of those with that being said. Alright, so here's the thing. Like, you're wanting to know if you should put it on with a carrier. And again, when you say carrier, I'm I'm taking this as though over the road stuff. I 100% believe that you can you should put the van on with the carrier if you are already happy with what you're doing. I kind of answered this in the previous question, uh, so I'm gonna I'm putting both of these both of these uh, questions in the same video. Uh, if you're happy with what you're doing, you don't want to go over the road. You're wanting to get a van to put it over the road. Yes, put it on with the carrier. Do your research in, in finding the right carrier. For one, have if you're going to do over the road, again, you're getting yourself invested into a bigger van. In my opinion, you should. Because if you're wanting to get the most out of your driver, you need to make your driver as comfortable as possible. And I'm not meaning he's got to have every amenity. If you have the financial resources to do that, great. If not, at least give them the bare minimum. And to me, the bare minimum is some auxiliary power, bunk, insulated van, e-tracks, all the all the equipment to strap down the load and all of those things. Uh, even a refrigerator or whatnot if, if they want it. So with that being said, put it on with a carrier, a reputable carrier, find out what type of van that they require, what size, you know, minimum year. Uh, then when you're finding a driver, say you've already got a driver in mind, you'll also have to find out if that driver is going to be approved by that carrier. So not only are you worried about what the, you know, whether they're going to accept the van, you got to be concerned with whether they're going to accept your driver as well. Because you asked about as opposed to finding your own work. Finding your own work, especially for over, over the road stuff, is very involved. So with you liking the schedule that you have, I wouldn't suggest going out and getting your own authority and trying to book your own loads. If you're talking about getting that van for local work, if it were me, yes, I'd find a company to put it on with. I, I Again, if I'm enjoying the schedule I have and the workload I'm currently on, then yes, I'm going to make it to where somebody else is taking care of all the other stuff that would need to be taken care of. It isn't worth the few extra dollars that I might get from the time that I'm going to lose that's going to be involved with it. So yes, I'd put it on with a local company, a local courier company, Last Mile, uh, Amazon Relay, whatever, whatever you can find that you feel is consistent work. I mean, the bottom line is, is you're trying to find something that's going to pay the most and is going to keep you the most consistent. And obviously, you know, the, the least amount of work for the most amount of money. So, I mean, you just do what you got to do if you're, because uh, the gig apps, you know, you're going to have to be involved in uh, looking up on the apps or having your driver responsible for it. Then you're leaving decision making up to your driver. Unless you know that person very well and you trust their instincts and decision making, That that's not, I wouldn't suggest doing that. So, yeah, I'd find a pretty good, uh, route through Amazon, uh, some of the local courier companies, go online to some of the sites and see if there's some regular dedicated routes that you can use your, your van to cover. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the answer to that. Yes, I would definitely put that work onto somebody else to let them find the freight and take care of the pay and all that. All you have to do at that point, whether you put it on over the road carrier or a local company, you're going to receive your pay and then you're going to pay it out to your driver. That's that's all you're going to have to be concerned with. Nothing extra. You know, besides obviously maintaining your vehicle, you know, making sure you're on top of that. All right, well, hopefully I answered that to, to your satisfaction. If not, again, like I said in the previous one, uh, leave your questions in the comments section and I'll get back to you. If it's involved, if it's a more involved answer you need, I'll do a video on it. If not, I'll be I'll reply to you directly in the comments and that way you'll get your answer a little bit quicker. So uh, hopefully that helped you out.